Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Nantucket, a new strategy game out, which is sort of taking the reins from the book Moby Dick and moving you into a 1800s world as a whaling captain, the sole survivor of the novel Moby Dick, Ishmael. Uh, that would be yours truly, us. We have recently purchased a brand new vessel. It's a brigantine, so it has a much larger storage space. It has two whaling boats. In general, a much more capable vessel. We started playing with that uh, within the last couple of episodes. Today, we're going to be continuing with that whaling vessel as we continue down the main quest. So I've only done the first mission in the main quest of this game. That is Finding the Rachel, which is the ship that saves you in the book Moby Dick. Today's video, or today's stream, uh, we are going to be going into uh, mission two of the main quest of the game as we hope to eventually uh, gain our revenge against the white whale Moby Dick. Uh, I'm going to initially go into the port menu here and continue upgrading some of our facilities to making our ship better. I'm actually going to go ahead and upgrade our trying works because it seems there's some sort of ratio from blubber to oil, like how much oil you get out of your blubber, I guess, or, or something to that effect. Um, so we can have more profitable whaling. So I'm going to go ahead and spend $300, uh, research that. It's going to take 120 days. That's our research here. We've already stocked up for a long time at sea. We have enough resources here for just shy of 200 days sailing. We already have our crew established. We've got uh, nearly all of our captain's prestige is being used. We've got two level 10 medics. We've got a level 10 hunter, a level 8 hunter, and two uh, level 10 and a level 9 craftsmen. Um, that does mean our take in the actual uh, prize money, if you will, for... Uh, fishing whales or our, our share of the revenue is only 36% because all of these level 10 guys each have a really high lay, which is their share of the booty. But I'm okay with that because I've got about eight grand in the bank for myself. And um, today is going to be more about going down the mission trees, which I want the, a better crew, you know, as good of a crew as possible as we attempt to go down the mission tree. Um, because I assume these are going to be more difficult uh, events. We are currently in Nantucket. We're seven years into the game. It is April of 1827. Uh, the game can go for a maximum of 50 years, is my understanding, so up to 1870. Uh, but right now we're in 1827, and the first thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be sailing north to the Northwest Passage. We had a side quest mission, uh, which is called Knight's Quest, Northwest Passage, uh, and we need to head up here. If you look... Um, if we go back down, where are we here? If we go to the Northwest Passage, you'll see more than 100 years have passed since James Knight went missing searching for the Northwest Passage. The Hudson's Bay Company wants you to locate him. They instruct you to begin your journey at an Inuit village of on Marble Island where his travel began. So that's what we're going to do. We don't have a lot of other side quests right now, so we'll go ahead and do that. It'll take us 17 days to get north. And there are oh, those little ditties, the little singing. I, I've turned the volume down, so it shouldn't... Uh, bar me out uh, at this time, unlike yesterday. Um, while crossing a stormy area of the sea, lightning strikes your ship and hits your main mast. Your lookout falls out of the crow's nest. He appears badly burned. I need a doctor here right now. 75% save the man's life, 25% he becomes maimed. I'll do my best to save him. He's probably going to be maimed. Or take him to the sick bay, 50-50. Alright, let's get the doctor right now. Your doctor's intervention not only saves the man life, but even manages to prevent any major lasting damage. Huzzah! Alright, so we're slowly making our way up into the Hudson Bay. Man, this game has a lot of singing. Like, well, I don't even need to speak, right? Oh my god, it's taking forever. We don't have any wind. Yeah, we're four days behind schedule. There's literally no wind. We're like pulling ourselves. We're sailing to windward. Oh, now we have the wind. Mm. And 
As you approach a small rocky island called Marble Island, you notice some smoke coming from a small Inuit village. When they realize you're heading into their direction, some men rush to put their canoes into the sea, ready to defend their village. We have no time to waste with these primitive people. Action stations! Well, I guess I don't have enough food to, like, bribe them, so I'm gonna have to kill them. Just great. Kill all the combatants present. Alright, well, I, I, I was hoping we'd be on a mission of peace. Doesn't look like it. Um, do one here, one here. Actually, no, we'll draw him. Put our level 8 in that boat. Other boat. And him. Alright. These are some pretty strong war canoes. Level 35, 40, and 55. Let's see. Let's see here we get a shot. Gonna try and take out the weakest of them first. Almost killed the first war canoe. 16 damage. Yee. Two crew members lost a lot of damage. Push this off. And you're going to do first aid to yourself. Heal yourself. All right. Warrior something, so he's immune. Uh, and this other person suffered a strike. The one war canoe down, two more to go. Like, someone's going to suffer 15 damage. He's going to heal himself. And he... going to hurt the other war canoe. I'm guessing is going to give it war chant damage to others. Okay. Oh, so it just increased the strike damage there by 10. That little perk did. So these guys are strong. Medic and the other one is stunned. We're going to get 27 damage. God. Covering fire! Can I shoot you? What is this? Remove enemy card. Oh. There. I don't know how we shot the other war canoe, but in any event, I'm... That worked out. Uh, maybe it backfired. Maybe his tack came back on him. I'm not quite sure how that worked out. That was interesting. Alright, so they're focusing on themselves this round. Nothing on the other boat. So miracle ointment, and they're going to heal themselves, which is fine. We didn't take any damage round. And they're going to shoot twice at the boat on the right. Resurrection. Oh, well, I can't use it because no one's dead. Apparently, you can bring someone back from the life. From dead. Uh, death. That's interesting. Alright, so one guy's healed. Or one guy's killed. Boat on the left isn't going to suffer any damage. So let's use this to, to damage the one remaining war canoe. Strike a 15 against our medic on the right. He's bleeding resistant. You see this little bandage trait prevents him from bleeding. The enemy's going to hit us with another 15 strike. Which could kill Owen. Let's use first aid on Owen to make sure he doesn't die. And first aid on our other medic here to make sure he doesn't die in the next round. So we'll see. He used it against my character. But I don't think he can kill me in the next turn. Wow, that was a miserable roll across the board. Let's go back to... Oh, he's stunned. Damn it. Better not kill me. First aid. And grenade! 29 damage. Wow! You can give yourself a miracle ointment, but you still just lost a ton of health. Um, he's going to go over here on the right. But he's not going to get there. Covering fire doesn't... Nice, so it does, you, you knock out their cart and you shoot them back. Nice, covering fire is awesome. I 
I don't know, Kushin. I don't know if I'd want to maneuver my actual whale boats or not. I like the approach that they have, um, in my opinion, in this game as it is. But I could see the the combat, I guess, could get a little repetitive. As you get further into the game, though, it gets really interesting and, and unique. So to this point, it hasn't gotten repetitive. Although I supposed if all you were going to do was keep kind of whaling in the same areas, it eventually certainly would become repetitive. All right, we enter the village with your men's weapons ready, and while women and children escape in all directions, you see an old man walking in your direction, showing you the point of his empty hands. Please, we peaceful. He stutters in broken English. We give you everything. Well, you attacked me. I wasn't trying to take anything. The old man tells you his grandfather accompanied uh, Knight during his expedition, and he made it back to the village alive. So Knight found the Northwest Passage, but he went missing somewhere between the continent's east coast and home. Okay. So where's the next northwest pass? Oh, so we gotta go all the way around the other side? We gotta go to Alaska? Ugh. Alright. Might as well explore the Hudson Bay while we're up here. Well, uh, waste. Why are we sailing backwards? Man, it is... Oh, I need to speed time up. I say that's part of why it's so slow. Alright, so... Are we... Let's go back to our crew. Oh, Norman, he is... I'm going to go ahead and heal him. Alright. Everybody's healed up. Perfectly healed. As we head down toward the main objective. Now that everybody is healed, I'm going to go ahead and put him back on the triworks. Put this guy on the gun. And the hold. Alright. Life on your ship has been a little tedious lately because... Whoops. What was this? Life on your ship has been a little tedious lately uh, because one of your men has broken been driving you mad. Every time you order him to perform a task, you have to ignore the way he does it or you risk getting upset. He is not slow or lazy. He just performs it in the least efficient way possible or effective way possible. Teach him a lesson. Whip him. Uh, leave him be. Let's whip him. We're gonna flog him. Move the dull trait and button his morale drops. Okay. Ship ahoy! You spot a pirate ship on the larboard. Looks like they're char changing course to chase. Your men look nervous and await your command. Use the cannons to make them desist. Stand and fight. Let's use our cannon. Pirates go away. All right. There right, you can see that pirate vessel sailing away. Yay, I'm a moderate. A moderate captain. Uh. Alright, after sailing around the African coast for weeks and a scream resounds among your crew. Captain, smoke ahoy! You rush to the deck looking at the dark smoke column coming from a small island on the horizon. Get closer. Order the ship adjusted sail in the island's direction. One of your men hands you a spyglass, and you inspect the island's coastline. It looks like a shipwreck happened a few days prior, and some men are now desperately waving their arms in your direction. Lit, uh, lit the ship's remains in order to draw your attention. Let's go check it out. Uh, three men rush into the water, welcoming you. Your boats approach them. It looks like they've been on the island for a few days, judging by their worn-out faces and rough camp built around the beach. Your boats reach the island... And while three castaways welcome your crew, you take a look around. The camp looks built of the ship's remains, boards, sails, and salt-encrusted pieces of furniture. It looks like they've been there for a few days. Okay, you keep saying that. Maybe more. As the wind changes, the sudden smell of death, blood, and rotten corpses overwhelms you. you lead your men toward a small wooden hut, which was built by... Uh, the driving remaining part of the ship bound to the sand. As you approach the makeshift hut, you notice a rivulet of blood slithering out of it, making sand around it congealed. The survivors continue to run toward you, but you are not sure about their intentions anymore. Keep walking, ignoring the screams of the survivors coming from behind you. As you enter the hut, the smell of death becomes unbearable. Many corpses lie in the corner of a vile slaughterhouse, mutilated, almost rotten. Another corpse lies on an impro improvised table where someone started tearing off its meat 
using a sharpening stone. You retch violently, shaking your entire body. All right, so obviously they're cannibals. The survivors stop in front of your men. They stand weapons in hand between your men and you. They're armed, and they look at you with the frenzy of a trapped animal. Order your men to lower their weapons and show no hostility. I will count to three, drop your weapons, and tell me what is happening. Ugh, what do we do, guys? I don't know. Guess we could lower the weapons and show no hostility. One option. Uh... Uh, eh, okay. One of the survivors appears to calm down, lower his weapon, walking in your direction. Captain, I'm Elwood of the Intrepid's first mate. We were chasing a white whale under Captain Gardner's command when we were attacked by a pirate ship. Our ship was set on fire and we barely made it to the island alive. Okay. Captain Gardner has been taken prisoner by the infamous pirate Deludulo. 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 He, and uh, and he left us to die here in corpses like damn vultures. The men starts crying, and you can see the other two become nervous. Calm down, we're here to help. Elwood draws his weapon, pointing it at you. You do not know what we have been through. Great. All right, apparently my captain, I never healed him up, but I've got to use him, so... We're gonna go with this as our combat. All right, so three pirates. I don't know why this guy has a skull and crossbones. Oh, Larkin, is he a leader or is he invincible or what? What's up with him? All right, so we healed ourselves up. Let's see what they do. Oh no, they shot my doctor. They shot my doctor. Oh, I think I just wasted a shot. I think I could have done... Yeah. I, for I always forget that in um, combat versus pirates or other people, when you're on, like, land or whatever, you actually get... Everybody gets to do their thing. Oh, great. Okay. Three attacks this round. We'll see. I've only got two, got two die rolls. Leo, shoot Leo, shoot me. So at least he's not, uh oh, stray bullet. Okay, leading resistance. Looks like they're gonna shoot THG this round, but he's gonna get better. Leo has been absolutely worthless in this fight and Larkin's dead. So just two more to worry about. They stunned my doctor. He'll be out this round, but everybody's healthy enough that I don't think they can kill me in one shot. Although I suppose they could kill the doctor if they focus on him. Depending on how much... And... Oh, damn. The doctor's down! Elwood's dead. Dexter's wounded. All right, I think I've got this. Oh, damn it. Not with him stunned, who knows? At least my character's bleeding resistant. He's gonna get shot again this turn, though. We really need to finish him off. That'll help. All right. I was switching fire over against Leo. That made no sense. Either way, we win. Max is dead. That's unfortunate. Uh, so we lost our doctor, but we win the battle. Uh, buried at sea while well, he was on shore. Gain prestige and some money. Get some blubber from these people. They're cannibals. And some oil. Frog, which... And some wood. The pirate is well known for his savagery and greed. You hope he is keeping Gardner alive to ask for ransom. You need to rush to his lair located somewhere in Madagascar before it's too late. Well, oh boy. Was my travel an ordeal to test my faith? We were sailing seas of nightmares where the light of the shepherd was feeble 
and its flock were scattering in despair. Uh, quest completed the lost boys before leaving the island your men check the beach looking for more survivors and valuable objects one of them hands you a cookbook written by rachel's cook rachel's cookbook rachel's way of a care way a character placed in a caboose can use his working skill attribute instead of crafting to cook if the character's working attribute is crafting or giving to the captain crafting value plus three okay so i don't know if i'm really in shape Cape Town is too... All right, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go to South America and see if we can pick up a new crew member, given that we just lost one of our valuable crew members. Um, see here the Northwest Passage. Number two, we gotta get to Alaska and the rescue mission still needs to go. Uh, nice, we taught him by example. All right, let's go to Imbiduta. Enter the harbor. Let's see where we're at. Everybody gets healed up. New issue of the newspaper. Our cruise injuries are all healed, and we get a little bit of money. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, newspaper. United Kingdom, France, and Russia demand Greek and Ottoman armistice. The Roman Catholic Diocese of Honolulu is founded in the Kingdom of Hawaii. And after gradual emancipation, slavery is abolished in New York State. Last slaves for... Okay. Go into the tavern. We'll see who we can recruit. Absolutely no one. All we have is some cabin boys, and I really still don't understand what cabin boys do. Um, hire one. Seems to me there'd be no real point. I'm really not sure what they do. What is the point of a cabin boy? I, I guess I'll just hire him and see what happens. Worst case happens, he gets killed. Um, we've got enough food. Let's just top things off, get them back up to at least 180 days for everything. Got a bunch of extra wood. All right. So we're going to go ahead and sail away. Let's make sure that our crew is all in the right places on the boat now that we lost one. All right, so expand that. What's our cabin boy even do? Even there? Oh, he's in the earth. Well, I don't know what you do, cabin boy. I don't know if you can, like, gain skills or level up or really... Maybe he'll at least be cannon fodder for us? I'm not really sure. Alright, so we're headed around the cape toward Madagascar, where the legendary pirate is located. Hoping to rescue the captain who rescued us from the white whale, Moby Dick. Yeah, new. that's kind of my idea, throw him in the way. A uh, pirate just came off Madagascar, let's see if we can make them desist. Pirates go away. Alright, so we fired our broadside and made them go away. Following the rumors about Diaboloto, you finally dock in a small Magalese fisherman village. Life seems to flow pretty normally, where fishermen repairing their fishing nets and kids running around the streets. Let's take a look around, see what we can discover. You feel a lot of eyes on you and your men. The village does not look like a pirate cove. It looks more like a peaceful town or a war zone's border. Oh. How is it a peaceful... Oh, peaceful town on a war zone's border. Armed men populate the streets, but everybody seems to live a normal life. Since you arrived on the mainland, you have noticed some men following you. Ask a passerby about some information. Turn back and confront the armed men following you. Well, they're probably not going to answer me. if they're Like, hey, there's armed people following you and we know you're bad, so I'm not going to put them in danger. I'm going to confront the armed men. I'm sure Captain Gardner will be fine. He is more valuable alive than dead. The group of five men approaches you with scared fa scarred faces, those who have spent many years at sea. They are sailors, probably pirates. We do not like nosy people in our town. What is your business here? Looking for Dioto, I want to talk to him. The men look at each other and have a silent discussion made of weird looks. The man looks back at you, scrutinizing you and trying to understand your intentions. Let us suppose you are in the right place for a moment. Why are you looking for him? None of your business, and I will keep it that way. Giving him money, but it doesn't tell me... Oh, $100. He is something I want to buy back. 
Man smiles at you. In that case, I guess you can follow me. Your men can wait here. I'm sure you do not need them to discuss your business. Man guides you inside the restaurant. The, furnace, uh, the furniture looks randomly placed about the room with no defined style, like they were collected from every place around the world. A man plays a boisterous and rankous tune at the piano, forcing everyone to speak loudly. Look to the man for guidance. Your, ma your guide points you to a long table at the end of the room. The, at the little, little blah. The long table at the end of the restaurant is occupied by a few men surrounding their captain, Di Diaboloto. He is a man in his late 20s, with messy, short black hair and t thin lips, drawing a sort of scar in the middle of his skinny face. As you approach his table, he glares at you with wild little dark eyes. The men around him place their hands on their weapons. I'm here for Captain Godna. Gestures for you to take a seat. The moment you take a seat, speaks to you in a steady and emotional voice. I do not care how you know it and who you are. Do not bother me with a story about your brother, friend, lover, or whatever you are. I see my money and you see the man. You show me that he lives and I will show you the money. Fair enough. Walks around the curve, blah, blah, blah. He moves his way, revealing the staircase, heading downstairs. You follow him. You walk through the restaurant's wine cellar and then a labyrinth of tunnels, revealing a sort of hidden city under the town. You end up in a huge sea cave where all ships come to unload their booty. The Yabsolo points you to a series of heavily guarded prison cells. One thousand dollars and I will also give you all of his useless stuff. He's the poorest whaler I have ever seen. Uh, I do not have the money, but I can offer you something more valuable. Really, what is that? Draw your weapon and attack him. That seems suicidal. I didn't bring my men, so I can't have them attack. Alright. Give him a thousand bucks. Orders his men to free Captain Garner. They bring him to you together with a small chest containing his personal belongings. Alright, well, it's a thousand bucks, but whatever. There was nothing of the captain I had met on the Piquot. He had Ahab's eyes. Blood-craving windows of a desecrated church. small box contains a few mundane objects of Captain Gardner's. A briar pipe, a pair of eyeglasses, and his revolver. Before returning the box to him, you remove the weapon. Alright. So now what? Missing pages. Gardner has discovered an old Hedda legend that might be related to Moby Dick, but his uh, Hedda diary was sold by Diablo to a rich merchant from New York. Go to New York and visit him to get it back. Okay, well that's fine. I wanted to go back to Nantucket anyway to get rid of this cabin boy. Get a better medic, if you will. Um, sure, we got the grog. Let's do it. Let's have a little party. Let's go and cover some more of this. Now that we're heading back to Nantucket, we can also get the upgraded um, crafting or whatever that thing is that we were researching. Trying to uncover as much of the ocean as possible. Run away from the pirates! They're chasing us! Still chasing us? Really? I'm out of the pirate waters. Why are they chasing me? Ah! Cease and desist. Pirates really don't like cannons. <laughs> Alright. And see, here's a, a whale migration route. Just activated. Let's go ahead and enter Nantucket. Uh, the good Triworks has been upgraded and installed, and a new issue of the newspaper is available. Okay. So we'll go here. We're going to fire our cabin boy. I really don't understand what the point of him is. And let's get a new medic. Level 9 is the best we can do. So we're... Wait, what did I just do? No. Rehire. I didn't want to fire him. Um, fire him, and there goes my take back down to 37%. Damn, I make like no money with this crew. I guess the nice thing of a cabin boy is he doesn't take up like any money. The Great Fire of Truk, Finland, destroys the city with many human casualties. Irish surgeon Robert Adams describes a new cardiac condition, and Ho Chunk, the leader... Ho-Chunk's leader, Red Bird, surrenders. It is the end of the Winnebago War. Winnebago, Wisconsin. The Ho-Chunk Casino in Wisconsin. Um, discover a new whaling area. Kill a John Clinton. All right. Go back to the general store. Let's pop off on some goods. 
Oh my god. We need some more grog. And we'll just keep the wood where it's at. Uh, we'll go back to the ship here. So we've upgraded our trying works. So we were actually losing... I was commenting on how you free up some store space when you convert from blubber to oil, and I thought that was like a good thing. But apparently you're losing money because you're less efficient at it. So um, I'm actually going to go ahead and keep researching this to keep um, getting better and better try works so that we have as much money as possible uh, when we successfully... Why is this red? Why is red? Anyway, we're going to sail away to New York now. I am not playing Sea Dog mode, Harvey. Is Sea Dog mode like the equivalent of uh, Iron Man? After docking your ship, you walk around New York City in a grotesquely bustling harbor where everything seems to pour out into the streets. Everything moves, everyone searches for something, and everybody looks to buy or sell, eat something, even yourself. Let's visit his office. He's a young and good-looking man in the artifacts business. He welcomes you in the museum-like office and listens to your story without interrupting a single time. I apologize, sir. Even considering your frightening story, I believe I cannot satisfy your request. In sooth, I have already arranged to sell the object in question. Implying that there's nothing more to add to the conversation. Or there's a way for us to solve the problem. I do business with rich and influential men. Men who do not like to be dissatisfied. Richard looks firm on his position and you know that if you want to obtain the Hadia book and keep chasing Moby Dick, then you have to do something in this exact instant or lose it forever. Grab an object and hit him! Okay. Um... Uh, I do not have the man of the masses skill. Sell it to me or I will denounce you for selling stolen artifacts. There's no need to draw too much attention to us, sir. I'm sure we can find a path to this mutually satisfactorily. I believe I have underestimated you, sir. I'm sure I can convince my client that there is a more precious artifact to buy. Pay me $500, a fee agreed upon, and my other buyer, and you can walk away with the Hadia book. Grab an object and hit him! <laughs> I'll pay. Got the money. All right. Iwan Glaja, the Great Pale. Even the Haida people were scared by Moby Dick's whiteness. A death shroud we were going to tear forever. All right, everybody, that's going to do it with this episode, this very uh, successful episode, I think. We made a lot of progress in the main storyline. Uh, we successfully battled some cannibalistic uh, mariners who had been left ashore and were eating other other people. Uh, we successfully negotiated with pirates in order to uh, get the release of the captain who had saved us, uh, even though he's a bit of a shadow of uh, his former self. And we were able to convince a uh, antique dealer in New York to give us the missing pages in a diary that will help us uh, continue the storyline further. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode uh, of Nantucket, this new strategy game of the 18th century whaling world and sequel to Moby Dick. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.